Hey, this is Don Johnson at airbrushgallery.com. Another little video for my YouTube channel. I wanted to update you on this mural on the fire truck door. I've gotten a bunch of emails with questions about this. I figured I'd answer them all at one time. As you saw in the first video, I started out with transfer tape just to get the design on the door. And then once the design was roughly on there, I pulled the transfer tape off and we're freehanding the rest of it. And the reason we're doing that is we don't want a bunch of hard lines. Nothing in nature has a bunch of hard lines. If you end up masking the whole thing and spraying it, it'll look like a stencil design. But what you want to be aware of, especially if you're not the one clearing it, is you don't want to leave any hard lines that separate colors or sections, like where the street meets the wall here. You want to make sure that this line is pretty flat. You don't want to leave it a raised edge because when they clear this and they wet sand it to buff it, it'll bring this line back out and it'll look real ugly. So you want to smooth all these out and then what I do is I just go back with a thousand or two thousand grit wet sandpaper and sand them down as you can see I've done here to get rid of those hard lines so when they go to clear it we're not having to come back and touch it up and redo it again and re -clear. So we want to leave the surface as flat as possible is what I'm saying. And as far as air pressure goes, we're doing a hard surface like this, especially freehanding it like this. I use Tamco and their airbrush colors. It's a solvent based paint. And I reduced the heck out of it. Um, I never really stopped to figure out how much, but a lot. And as far as air pressure goes, it depends on what kind of airbrush you have and the viscosity or thickness of the paint you're using. This is about like milk, maybe a little less than milk as far as viscosity goes. And right now I'm at about 20 pounds of pressure with this Rich Pen 313C side feed airbrush. And just to demonstrate, I'm going to go back over this, these uh, harness lines. But as you can see, when I did that, there's no overspray. Nothing got on the white. We're all good to go. So you want to run as little pressure as you can and still get good atomization. In other words, the paint atomizes real nicely. You don't want it to be a bunch of dots that uh, look ugly. But as you can see, there's very little overspray at this pressure with this paint. And that's what you need. Air pressure is always a hard question to answer because it depends on so many variables. What kind of paint you're using, what kind of airbrush you're using, the surface you're airbrushing. The best thing I can tell you is with your airbrush and the type of paint you use, start out at about 40 or 50 pounds of pressure and keep turning it down to the least amount of pressure where the paint is still atomizing good. I'll turn it down even more and you'll see right there where it starts spinning. Not good. So you turn the pressure back up a little. And there we have it. 
our paint's flowing pretty well out on our brush. We're not going to create a lot of overspray when we're doing freehand projects like this. Another thing you want to do before you take it to get it cleared is make sure you have all the masking off. Every little piece. Just run your hand over it and you can feel it if there's still masking there of some kind. As you can see, at this pressure of this airbrush and this paint, I can go in and I can paint black over white and you're not going to get a lot of overspray. It's not, not going to kill you. You're not going to have to go back in and redo the white is what I'm saying. So that's air pressure and a hard surface like this fire door, fire engine door. The other thing to keep in mind is you have to work within people's budget. This is a complex project. You have to price it right. But like when you're going to the dentist, you know, you pay him for one filling, he's not going to give you two. If you do this for a living, you're as professional as any other profession, dentist, lawyer, any of those. So. I mean, you need to make the customer feel like he's getting more than he's paying for, for sure, but don't kill yourself. I mean, you, you have to work within the customer's budget. If he only has a budget for 10 hours, you can't spend 40 hours on it. I mean, you're not going to stay in business that way. So that's my update on this mural. Make sure that there's no hard line so when the guys go to clear it and wet sand, wet sand it to buff it, that you're not going to have a problem. And as far as air pressure goes, we just went over that. You just start out high, keep turning it down, and turning it down until you get to the lowest point possible and still get good paint atomization so that you're not going to create a lot of overspray when you're freehanding projects like this. The other good thing is freehand templates are always your friend on a project like this. That's my update on this mural and air pressure and masking and making sure that you have no hard lines so you don't end up in trouble when it's clear coated. Until next time, this is Don Johnson, Airbrush Gallery. It's just paint. Have fun. Relax.